AQA, A-level physics, forced vibrations and resonance. Uh, this bit of the specification, finishing off this periodic motion bit. Now, two types of oscillation. This is one way that we can categorize oscillations. We have free oscillations and forced oscillations. A free oscillation you get it oscillating and then there are no external forces acting on it and it just oscillates okay uh, for example there's a kid on a swing give them a push and then like a pendulum they will just oscillate at their natural frequency if it's a pendulum then t equals 2 pi root l over g if it's a mass on a spring t equals 2 pi root m over k so there's nothing making it oscillate it is oscillating at its natural frequency yeah a forced oscillation is where there is an external force making it oscillate what we call it a driver so there is a driving frequency uh, this lady here is making these maracas cha 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 she's picking them up and she's shaking them she is making them oscillate <coughs> at a certain frequency okay so that is a forced oscillation now this is an experiment that you should know well we what we have a mass on a spring we have a signal generator and a vibration generator and we're basically making the mass on the spring oscillate we are driving it so there is an external driving force uh, and we can measure the amplitude of these oscillations and what we notice if we turn up the frequency of the signal generator what we notice is that now to start with at very low frequencies the mass ju just goes up and down it does what it's told by the by the vibration generator at the same frequency so the amplitude it just goes up and down like that and the amplitude is what the vibration generator tells it to be but then we get this peak and we get this peak when the driving frequency is the same as the natural frequency of the oscillator so basically we're telling it to oscillate and if we tell it to oscillate at the frequency that it likes to oscillate at then we get large amplitude oscillations and this is called resonance it resonates remember when the driving frequency is equal to the natural frequency of the system we get large amplitude oscillations learn that sentence word for word okay and then you don't have to think about it just repeat it and that's what resonance is that's a definition of resonance lots of examples of resonance when you play a guitar your guitar strings have a natural frequency okay well Jimmy Page there he's plucking them and the guitar strings are, are vibrating the, the body of the guitar is designed to have certain resonant frequencies to make certain frequencies louder uh, the, the drum there when you bang on the drum the air inside the drum resonates and that makes everything louder if you imagine you didn't have that that bit at the bottom the drums wouldn't be very loud okay so it is designed so that the air inside resonates uh, you can try this there's a, a good video of an annoying child doing this you can actually smash a wine glass by singing at it oh and if you sing at just the right frequency then the wine glass resonates because it's its natural frequency and the stresses are enough to actually make it smash uh, I think this this child should really have some safety glasses on there because there's going to be some broken glass very soon okay so yeah you can smash a wine glass by singing at it yeah try that in the pub tonight with your beer glass 
Uh, there's electronic resonance as well. You don't need to know anything about it, but things like the tuning circuit in a radio actually relies on resonance. If you do, <clears throat> if you do any electronics, you'll learn about that. This is an MRI scan, magnetic resonance imaging. Okay, it's a little bit complicated how it works, but it relies on the resonance of certain molecules. Yeah, uh, and uh, in the microwave oven, yes, that makes the water molecules in your food resonate. They gain energy and the food gets hot. So lots of examples of resonance. Resonance can be a good thing. Resonance can be a problem. If something like a, a building or a, a bridge Hopefully you've seen the video. If you haven't, look up the video of the Tacoma, Tacoma Narrows Bridge. And basically this bridge falls to pieces because it resonates. Uh, the wind blows in the valley and the bridge starts oscillating. Uh, and basically the stresses in the bridge are so great that it falls to pieces. So if resonance is a problem, what can we do about it? Well, you can increase the amount of damping. If you increase the amount of damping, then you're losing energy every cycle, so the amplitudes won't be as great. Uh, look at this graph here. You've got your, your resonant peak there. If you increase the amount of damping, the, the, the resonant frequency stays the same, but all of the amplitudes are reduced. The other thing that you can do is change the natural frequency of the system so that it is unlikely to resonate. For example, the bridge, the, the supports at the end of the bridge, you can make them stiffer. If you make them stiffer, then you are changing the natural frequency of the bridge. Uh, if you don't know about the Millennium Bridge in London, that was resonating when people were tromping over the bridge and they solved the problem by stiffening the supports to the bridge. OK, uh, increasing the amount of damping does not change the resonant frequency uh, as far as you're concerned, unless you do it at a higher level. What it does is it alters the sharpness of the resonance peak. So we talked about the resonance peak and here it's nice and sharp. When we increase the amount of damping, you'll notice that it gets less and less sharp. The, the amplitude at which it resonates gets less, and we say that the resonance peak becomes less sharp, according to the syllabus.